Spirit. Huh? More people and colder every day. Funny, huh? I thought you were going, there must be less and less people every day. How come more and more people every day? <laughs> Cannot believe it. What's wrong? Huh? Where do you come from? <laughs> You're not going? You did not go yesterday? Some? Only some. Not too many, right? Oh. I feel like I owe you something every day, huh? Are you okay? Yeah. Cold? No. Not cold? <laughs> uh, yes or no? no. Not cold. <laughs> I hear yes and no, so make up your mind. Yes or no? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the man say no, the woman say maybe. <laughs> Oh gosh, it's really cold, huh? Right? <laughs> Today I have to say yes. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> oh, when is the last day that you stay here? Hmm? Tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day? No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think I'm so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> there will be some yes and some no, some maybe. <laughs> How many people live tomorrow? You see, you see, you see, you see, you see? Not all, you see that? Only 50, 50, 50. Yeah. How many people live after tomorrow? Hmm. How many people don't live at all? <laughs> Never want to live. <laughs> Okay, okay, I cannot win, huh? Oh, this is the trouble with the disciples. <laughs> okay, never mind. I think uh, I just read you a story and that's finished. <laughs> the job of the day. <laughs> Actually, all these stories you can read by yourself. <laughs> no? Have you heard this story before? No. No. Did you? No. No? So many stories. I don't know what story to read to you. All stories are good. From India. Mm. Our devotion to God. A story about devotion is always good. Mm. <laughs> Meanwhile, you can look at me, huh? You complain that you don't look at me enough, so look. <laughs> Just look, huh? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't matter, huh? I think I'll read this one, huh? Mm -hmm. There are many similar stories, anyhow. Mm -hmm. If you don't uh, understand English, you should find somebody who understands English next to you and translate it for you, okay? Did you know Find an English person to blah blah into your ears. <laughs> Not into my ears. <laughs> then I don't know whether he says it wrong or right. <laughs> and I will not lose my <laughs> inspiration. Okay. Now, uh, this is uh, the story of how good it is to be charitable. You know, the benefit of charity. You know what charity is, right? Yes. Uh, charity it means every day you cook something and then offer to yourself. <laughs> 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 because God is within you. So if you offer to God, it eh, means you offer to yourself. Okay? Is that right? Yes. <laughs> now, at the foot of the Gadamadana Palaya mountain, <laughs> Indian, you know, where everything is adadadana na na. <laughs> just like, <laughs> just like, uh, uh, how you say? Japanese, everything, oh, kono, 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 koko. <laughs> now, at the foot of the Ganda Madana Chamalaka mountain, I read wrong every time, different mountain every time. <laughs> the same mountain, okay? Same like the first time. There lived an old woman. Do you know what an old woman is? Yeah? yeah? If you don't know, look at me. <laughs> Okay, 
Mm. She loved seclusion. Ah, must be a very great practitioner, no? Mm. Seclusion. What you know? You know what is seclusion is? Huh? No, you don't. Now you're living in seclusion. For example, you came from America, Korea, come here to stay here with yourself. <laughs> okay, and you don't go out shopping or find boyfriends, girlfriends, things like that. And you don't talk to outside people. You stay here in this environment, far away from everybody. Huh? And you meditate every day. And you seclude your mind within yourself in order to find your power, your greatness, your peace. That is seclusion. Yeah. So I don't know what kind of seclusion this is. Let's see. Huh? Normally seclusion means like that. Okay? Uh, but not the prisoner who is locked up within his cell. Okay? <laughs> Anyhow, seclusion. This woman, she loved seclusion. Most people, when they love seclusion, it means they want to be one with God. They want to be alone so that they can think of God, they can meditate on God, they can remember God, they can love God, they can see God, they can hear God, they can talk to God, they can listen to God, they can <laughs> eat with God, <laughs> sleep with God, walk with God, sit with God, etc. Okay? Now, that is a true seclusion. Yeah? Mm. But she was... This woman is not this case. She was the worst of all the misses in the country. Ah, it means she's very stingy. Miser, huh? Right? St- Miser. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Only one S here. <laughs> Misers in the country. Oh, she's a mice. Oh, no, a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> a mouse never gives anything to anybody. Perhaps that's where the word miser come from, right? Only one S here. Mm. If two more S's, then would be better, huh? It would become Mrs. Huh? <laughs> like me. <huh? laughs> now, she was the worst miser in the, con- in the country. In India, of course, huh? not in America. Maybe they are worse than that in America, I don't know. <laughs> don't tell them. Okay. Maybe, I always say maybe, okay? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, in case I uh, offend your national pride. She lived alone in seclusion just because she didn't like to share her possessions, her food, with other people. Ah, I was thinking. Ah. I was having an illusion. I thought she's living there alone because she wanted to think of God and meditate like you. Uh, like you, the saints in Meoli, huh? But no. Mm. Charity was unknown to her. She knows nothing about charity. Mm. She did not part with even one grain of rice for the Cambodian people. <laughs> <laughs> During her lifetime, never ever did she give anything at all. Not even her cleaning mop. When it's worn out, she would repair it or keep it somewhere in case. Yes, I never give it to anybody. <sighs> now there is a god called Lord Vishnu. You know Vishnu, huh? Second world god, huh? Perhaps. <laughs> and he watched with interest the life and action of this famous old lady. He found that she was to die soon. After New Year. After she eats the first rice cake, she's probably going to choke to death. Yeah. Actually, there are many Japanese old people who joke on rice cakes during New Year's festival. Make sure you don't eat too much rice cakes, okay? You know the sticky rice cake? Yeah. yeah. I don't know how they can choke on it, but actually somebody did. Uh, maybe this lady would choke on rice cakes, sticky rice cakes, on New Year, and then she dies soon, okay? And Lord Vishnu saw that she had only three more days of her life on earth. Ah, how good! Mm. (laughs) So that people could share some of her possessions (laughs) after she's gone. Lord Vishnu, therefore, called Kakabhusandi Ananda, 
Maharaja to his sire and said to him, My very dear beloved Busandi, uh, Ananda Maharaja, look at this <laughs> old lady. She has not done even a little of charity during her life. She has been miserly all throughout her entire existence. You go and try to snatch something from her at least today, because tomorrow she has to die. <laughs> When she dies, she will have some merit to her credit in that case, if you stole something from her, at least some chocolate or something. <laughs> Or maybe popcorn. <laughs> Kakabu Sandi Ananda Maharaja nodded. Okay. In the modern language, okay. Oh, I begin to get hot <laughs> because I have a heater hidden here. <laughs> Not that I have magical power. <laughs> ah. And Uh, he took the form of a crow and sat on a tree near the house of Kachani. Kachani is the old woman's name. Hmm? Okay. It was the time when she was washing a handful of black gram soaked in water for cooking her food. Now Busandi decided to snatch away a big full of it. Gram, right? What is that? I don't even know what it is. Maybe rice, huh? Maybe. Okay, let's change it into rice to make it, <laughs> to make it more easy. <laughs> okay, now he wanted to snatch a, a big bowl of rice, okay, from the old lady, the stingy old lady. <laughs> and suddenly, in one leap, he flew near the vessel and took a big full, a big full, huh? A mouthful of grain with lightning speed. <laughs> But the alert old woman grabbed him with a greater speed, speed still, <laughs> grab him by the neck like this. <laughs> She wrung his neck, Ugh, yuck. And <laughs> and kept it twisted so that the grain did not slip down to his stomach. Yeah. I didn't read this story before. I'm sorry to pick it on New Year for you. Make sure you don't do the same thing to the poor birds. Keep your precepts, okay? <laughs> My goodness. Meanwhile, With her other hand, she parted the beak, right? The beak of the bull, and squeezed out, took out to the last grain from the throat of the struggling crow. Oh. <laughs> really, she deserves an award from us, huh? <laughs> right? <laughs> the most miserly woman in the world, right? In history. <laughs> Kanjani is the old woman's name. Hmm? Okay. It was the time when she was washing a handful of black gram soaked in water for cooking her food. Now Busandi decided to snatch away a big full of it. And suddenly, in one leap, he flew near the vessel and took a big full, a mouthful of grain with lightning speed. <laughs> But the alert old woman grabbed him with a greater speed still, <laughs> grabbed him by the neck like this. <laughs> She wrung his neck, Ugh, yuck, and, <laughs> and kept it twisted 
so that the grain did not slip down to his stomach. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, with her other hand, she parted the beak, right? The beak of the bird. <laughs> and squeezed out, I was like, took out the grain to the last grain from the throat of the struggling crow. Oh. <laughs> really, she deserved the award from us. Huh? <laughs> The most muscly woman in the world, right? In history. <laughs> I don't know if there was such a story. There must be, huh? I don't know. Could be, huh? Some people are so thoughtless, uh, I'll say, arrogant and stingy, stupid, uh, <laughs> cruel, <laughs> cold blooded. <laughs> All right. Kakabusandi Ananda Maharaja struggled for his life. <laughs> At last, he was let free after she thought all the grain <laughs> had been, I'll say, poked out by her. Mm. He flew to Lord Vishnu and fell at his feet. Oh. Half dead. <laughs> Lord Vishnu questioned him as to what had happened after he left him. Busandi hmm. Aganan Ah no, never mind, call him Busandi. <laughs> Spell his last long name. Gasp out the whole story. <laughs> Pantingly, yeah. and said, Oh Lord, oh my God, God Almighty, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost strangled to death. I could not succeed in my mission. I'm very sorry. But I could not get even a grain of food from that wretched old woman. Then the Lord Vishnu said, Oh, Busandi, do not say so. Come, let me examine your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Open your mouth, let me have a look. <laughs> so, <laughs> Busandi opened his back like this. <laughs> and the Lord Vishnu used his wisdom magnifying glass, <laughs> wisdom eye, with a magnifying glass, look into his throat and found, Ah, there's something there. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Let me see what it is. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> oh, let's see what it is. It must be something, because this is a story, you know. Like movies, there must be something. Otherwise, it could not continue. Yeah, it must be something. Where is it? Where is it? Now? Okay. Ah, he saw a little bit of husk, the husk, yeah, maybe the outer, uh, huh, the outer skin shell of the 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 grain, right, of the rice or whatever that was, and uh, sticking to his palate. <laughs> <sighs> Thanks God. <laughs> At least he has not wasted his time and struggled for nothing. <laughs> Look, Bosandi, there's a small bit of husk sticking to your palate. I'm satisfied. The Lord Vishnu say, Oh, the Lord is easy to satisfy. <laughs> if we knew that, we wouldn't have to meditate so long every day. <laughs> Tell him we just put the our bottom on the cushion, that would be fine. <laughs> Better than nothing, since he's so satisfied with even a, a piece of husk. Huh? Okay, so now, ah, the old lady has earned some merit. Oh, blessed be Lord Vishnu, so compassionate and loving and merciful. Okay, now he said, 
But Sandy, when she goes back to the world after her death, let her be fed on the husks of the particular grain which was found sticking to your palate. So the old woman will be eating that all her life long. Ah, it must be tasty. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Lord, so saying, disappeared. Great and marvelous are the benefits of charity and righteousness, even involuntarily. <laughs> <laughs> Infinite and overwhelming is the love and compassion of the Lord, Vishnu. Such is the mysterious potency of even the least act of kindness and charity. <laughs> Probably she didn't want to take it out because she knew it was useless. There was not much there, you know. <laughs> okay, let him have the little husk. <laughs> that the fruit of it will cling to you and save you in your life beyond. The Lord Vishnu Himself, in His great love, creates opportunities for the redemption and deification of the sinning human. Man has to grasp such opportunities as veritably God sent. When the old woman, who didn't know meritorious act, was ordained to get bread made of husk, what would be the result of your hundreds of meritorious acts of feeding the poor, clothing the naked, relieving the distress of others, and comforting the sorrowful. Understand? Yes. Uh, even if she had just let a little bit of her stick in there, uh, all her life she will be eating bread made out of it. So at least she has a lot of, of things. And if we give people a lot more things, how much would we have? That is the, the uh, conclusion. Huh? That's the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, never mind, we don't have to say further, everybody knows already. I often told you helping others is helping yourself. Hmm? It's a pity that not many people in the world know this. Hmm? That's why in the last uh, few days, New Year's Day, we made an award ceremony hmm? so to remind the people of this country and of the world of the noble uh, action of charity, yeah? because only by being charitable and loving can one uh, rescue oneself from misery in the later life to come. If one has not met a master to be liberated in one lifetime, one must be reborn again. And it is better to be reborn in a plentiful environment with uh, not so much suffering, like lacking of comfort, like food, clothing, house, shelter, and every other necessity of life. Hmm? And therefore, I encourage other people to practice charity, not because I need them to help me to help others, <laughs> but it is for themselves because they need it. Hmm? Because uh, they never know whether next life they have enough merit to live such a comfortable life again, like they do in Taiwan now. Hmm? So it's better they continue to sow the good deeds. And that is if they don't see any master. Yeah. Uh, it, when one sees the master, whether one does good deeds or no good deeds, one still practices meditation, and the merit is enough to liberate you. Uh, we don't have to come back again to enjoy. A good or bad life, so no problem. Kapish? <laughs> That's it. Enough? No. No. What do you mean, no? <laughs> and you say, no, you mean maybe, right? <laughs> okay, let's see what's the next one. Okay. Let's move to another higher level. <laughs> <laughs> this is mental worship. Hmm? We talk about charity. It's a very meritorious 
But how about meditation? Yeah. How about prayers? How about mental worship in the Lord instead of doing charity? Oh, together with charity. Okay. Mental worship means a devotee, huh? a follower, doesn't use any external objects such as flowers, incense, uh, drums, gongs, or statues, uh, food offerings, etc., to worship. Now, Arjuna, you remember Arjuna? Mm, the devotee of Lord Krishna. It is uh, recounted in the Bhagavad Gita. You know, huh? Okay. Arjuna was very fond of doing long and ostentatious external worship of God. He had a spacious worship room lit up with countless lights. He used gold and silver vessels. He spent several hours in ceremony and worship Lord Shiva. He would sit for many hours and throw cartloads of flowers, you know, um, like our car, no? busloads <laughs> of flowers at the image of Lord Shiva. You know Lord Shiva? Yeah, one of the Hindu gods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Huh? Shiva is supposed to be the lord of destruction. Actually, he destroys evil. Hmm? He doesn't destroy good people. Okay? Destroyer doesn't mean destroying a good uh, creation. It destroys only evil. Yeah, okay, now. Uh, there was a brother of Arjuna called Bhima. He never sat to do any worship. He never went to the temple. He always goes to Meli. <laughs> <laughs> He used to close his eyes for a few minutes just before dinner, just a few minutes before dinner, and do mental worship of Lord Shiva. Perhaps just like the way you do. I know every time you, you get the Kang Bay, you just like this. I don't know what you do. <laughs> and sometimes a person behind you, <laughs> when you do like this, <laughs> Yeah, take the food. <laughs> Just throw some food for me and you don't even know. <laughs> he closed his eyes a few minutes just before dinner and did mental worship of Lord Shiva. Perhaps he makes offerings, huh? Or recites the five names or something like that. Ah, okay. Arjuna thought that he was a great devotee of the Lord and that he was highly pious and devoted. He thought that his brother Bhima had no devotion. Therefore, he looked down upon him with content. <laughs> Lord Krishna found out the attitude of Arjuna and wanted to teach him a good lesson and bring him to his senses. He proposed uh, to Arjuna to take a trip to Mount Kailas, the abode of Lord Shiva. You know where Mount Kailas is? I also don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that it is in Tibet or somewhere in the Himalayas, huh? one of the holiest mountains. Mm, and the Indian people as well as the Tibetan people, the Buddhist followers and Hindu followers, they often go to Mount Kailas as one of their pilgrimage centers. Okay. And the way there is very, very dangerous and very difficult to, f to, to follow through. Mm. There are no shops and things like that. You have to take your own food, yeah? bring your own sleeping bag and tent. Mm. If you can survive the weather, <laughs> then you can come back. Otherwise, goodbye. Senorara. Mm. <laughs> 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 Okay, Arjuna did not suspect anything, so he gladly uh, consented to the proposal of Sri Krishna. They both started on the journey. What a good master, huh? Uh, if you want to teach a disciple, must go with him. 
uh, must endure the same hardships so that Arjuna can learn a good practical lesson by a living example. Uh, such a good master is he. Uh, if it were me, I say, you go alone. <laughs> <laughs> I stay here and pray for you. <laughs> I will ask the inner master to protect you. <laughs> Because uh, in the old days, the master of uh, any uh, degree did not have so many disciples. Huh? I don't think they could have many disciples because of the uh, communication and transportation problems. Mm. Also, they tested the disciples long before they accepted and things like that. Huh? Also, it was not easy to organize everything in such a big scale like today. Besides, even today, not any master can have many disciples, right? Yeah. Any time, for example, we uh, make a lecture, oh, many thousands of people come, eh? only a few hundred stay. And then after that, few <laughs> fewer left behind to continue the practice, right? Anything can uh, tempt them to go away, meet women, money, family, influence, friends, society, anything, old habits, drag them back to their uh, older habits. There is a brother of Arjuna called Bhima. He never sat to do any worship. He never went to the temple. Arjuna thought that he was a great devotee of the Lord and that he was highly pious and devoted. He thought that his brother Bhima had no devotion. Therefore he looked down upon him with content. <laughs> Lord Krishna found out the attitude of Arjuna and wanted to teach him a good lesson and bring him to his senses. He proposed to Arjuna to take a trip to Mount Kailas, the abode of Lord Shiva. Arjuna did not suspect anything, so he gladly uh, consented to the proposal of Sri Krishna. Now, they both started on the journey to go to Mount Kailash. I told you already, it's not a fun place to go. It's a very, very long journey and walking through landslides sometimes, uh, snowing through, you know, mountains deep of snow. Very difficult. Many people go and don't come back. Well, actually, anywhere in Himalayas is difficult to go. But Kailash is longer journey, that's all. It takes longer time. Otherwise, anywhere you go in Himalayas, it's only like a trekking path, you know, and you walk one footstep after another. The path is sometimes very narrow and dangerous, wet and snow and cold, and you don't have anything. Sometimes it's difficult to make a fire in such a high altitude, because the atmosphere is different. <laughs> the fire is difficult to start, and then when it starts, it's difficult to boil. <laughs> That's why most of the time I ate uh, raw food. <laughs> yeah, whatever I found, I just eat. <laughs> no need to cook. <laughs> takes too long. Uh, sometimes it doesn't cook. Uh, takes oh, takes one day. <laughs> okay. Now, when they are on their way, they met a man dragging a cart loaded with flowers of diverse kinds. Arjuna asked the man where he was taking the flowers to, but the man kept silent as he was very much absorbed in his work, very concentrated. Not like you when you sit in meditation. <laughs> Is Master around? <laughs> Is she coming yet? <laughs> it's six o'clock already, why hasn't she come? <laughs> <laughs> so Lord Krishna said to Arjuna, Let us follow the man and find out the things for ourselves. Arjuna agreed 
and they both followed the man. They saw him empty the cart by the side of a huge heap of flowers, which was as big as a hill of Shihu Daochang. <laughs> <laughs> they further saw several hundreds of carts, all loaded with flowers, approaching the same spot and emptying their contents there, all the flowers, from so many different hundreds of carts, emptying in the same place. There was a huge mountain of flowers, fresh flowers there. Arjuna became more and more curious. Hmm. He could not control his curiosity anymore. So he asked the man, Please tell me where these carts of flowers come from. None of them bothered to reply. <laughs> but one man said, after repeated questioning from Arjuna, Venerable Sir, kindly do not disturb us. We are too busy with our work. We have no time to talk to anybody. We have brought only 750 carts of flowers, and more than 750 more are still in the temple. They are all the flowers with which one Bhima, a son of Pandu, worshipped our Lord yesterday. Understand? Mm. That means these mountains of flowers, only half of what they <laughs> have to carry out, they still have lying somewhere in the temple. And all these flowers came from Bambi. <laughs> who is Bambi? The brother of Arjuna, the lazy one, the one who never went to the temple, never worshipped the Lord, you know, apparently, and never did anything, never gave a flower or incense to the Lord, yeah? The one that Arjuna always looked down upon as useless, yeah, as an atheist and not devoted to God. Now it is hardly four more hours before his worship today, and we must remove all the flowers within that time. <laughs> every day he worships, the mountain of flowers come. So they have to remove every day like so many flowers from him, yeah, from his worship. Arjuna was struck with wonder. He asked, is it Bhima or Arjuna that you speak of? <laughs> Are you sure you didn't make a mistake? You mean Arjuna, right? Arjuna, huh? Not Bhima, no? <laughs> My friend, think, think about it. You're mistaken. The name is Arjuna. Arjuna, A-R-J-U-N-A. A-R-J-U-N-A. Ah, must be. So the man replied, Oh. <laughs> Don't talk about Arjuna. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not at all. Not that one. It is Bhima, his brother, ah, who does such glorious worship with intense devotion, and not his brother Arjuna, who merely makes an outward show of his worship. Ah. <laughs> mm. Just then, another man came with a basket of flowers. Uh, a basket. You know, small one that I put candy and <laughs> cakes for you yesterday? Uh, a man came with such a small basket of flowers. Lord Krishna asked that man on purpose. On purpose. <laughs> not that he didn't know, huh? He pretended not to know. You know, the Lord Krishna. You think he didn't know that he had to ask the man? <laughs> Uh, my friend, whose offering are these flowers? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know the answer. The man said, They were offered yesterday by an ostentatious man who lives on earth. His name is Arjuna. <laughs> <laughs> and he makes a display of his worship without any real love and devotion. Therefore, one basket of flowers. And talks so much about it. Arjuna lower his head <laughs> in shame <laughs> and said to the Lord, Oh, Krishna, Ching Hai Wu Shang Why did you have to bring me here? Huh? <laughs> Let us leave this place at once. <laughs> 
huh? you could have pointed out my defects, my self-conceit and ostentation at home and saved all this trouble and exertion. I do admit that I thought very highly of my worship and devotion. I treated Bhima with contempt. Just now I realize that Bhima's short meditation with sincere devotion is more valuable than all my showy worship all day long. Lord Krishna smile. and kept silent. <laughs> now you know what it is. Huh? There is a lot of uh, commentary down there, but I think you know already, okay? Make your own comments. <laughs> All right? You happy? Yeah. Good, huh? Mm. <laughs> so you know, huh? in our place, huh? in our non-temple temple, huh? <laughs> We don't bother with flowers and incense or drums and gongs or anything. Uh, we just bother with sincerity and inner devotion. That's why I tell you to concentrate and meditate. Huh? No need for outer performance so much. No need to even bow to me or bow to any Buddha. Mm? If you see him inside, see the Buddha inside, you, you may bow to the Buddhas if you want to. But the Buddhas do not expect this things. They expect that you are devoted to yourself so that you can find your Buddha nature and become a Buddha or become one with God. Find your own glorious nature and be of help to yourself and many other beings. And that is what the Buddha expects from us, right? Mm. Sometimes we have flowers, you can see, huh? <laughs> No high heels today, so <laughs> difficult to see the master. <laughs> now, sometimes we have the flowers too, you can see, huh? It's for decoration when we have a grand occasion, right? Just to please the eyes of every living Buddha <laughs> in the hall. Otherwise, we don't even have a hall, right? <laughs> uh, okay, these are places that we repair after. <laughs> you can see all the mud walls, broken mud walls still there for souvenirs. Hmm? <laughs> Before the little chicken people used to run around here. <laughs> and now the little Buddha still run. <laughs> Both have Buddha nature anyhow. <laughs> so actually, in every uh, religious body, they emphasize mental worship and inner devotion, and not the outer ritual. So now you know you're on the right path. Yeah? Yes. Okay? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> yeah? Oh, how long I'm here already? One hour? Oh. No? <laughs> Time flies, huh? Okay. No need to take too long, you know? <laughs> Look at your marriage and you know what happens. <laughs> no need to stay together too long and bug each other. Huh? <laughs> yes, the diamond is small, therefore it's precious. Okay? Human life is short, that's why it's valuable. Hmm? Fancy if we stay so long in this world, what will we do? Huh? Then every day I have to tell stories <laughs> for, for numerous years. Huh? And then what to do? Huh? Then we never finish with our work and then we never could leave this world and then we will never become Buddha. <laughs> okay, so let it be, whatever it is, okay? Quality is more important, but make sure you eat enough food. <laughs> okay? Yeah. All right. So I meditate with you for a while. Huh? Mm. And then, are you ready to meditate? Yes. Yeah. I told her to come down and tell you to gather together because I will come down. But she, when I phoned, she said, they already gathered before I <laughs> came down. <laughs> I said, what? It's only about after five o'clock. She said, yes, they're ready. 
I say, I do I owe them anything? <laughs> and then every time they have to come at the same hour and want something. Uh, anyhow, I try to put myself in a good mood and come down with a smile. I keep telling myself, keep smiling, whatever happens, just keep smiling. <laughs> I said, put your bad mood under the wheel <laughs> and crush it, <laughs> keep smiling. And then it worked, it really worked. <laughs> Otherwise, when I heard that people already gathered in front of the hall without my order <laughs> and waiting to collect that, <laughs> I was feeling, my God, what's that? Do I have to always tell them stories? Hmm? Are you warm enough? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if you want to make a fire for yourself, yeah, then you can go and get the wood yeah? and find an empty place where there are no trees. Very difficult here. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, a small lake. In the middle of it, no trees. <laughs> you may, you may waddle to the middle and sit together. <laughs> on top of the water and make a fire. <laughs> that should be fun. Huh? <laughs> Anyhow, I heard that many of you have miracle power. You can walk on water, sit on water, lie on water. <laughs> no? Yeah? You do, you do it every day. You lie, sit, stand, walk on top of water. <laughs> and you don't know. <laughs> make sure that your troubled water becomes no trouble. <laughs> All right? To live in this world is a kind of magic power. Hmm? We walk on water every day, <laughs> troubled water. Huh? We walk, sleep, eat, uh, function on top of troubled water. This world is like a troubled water lake. Hmm? And everyone needs kind of struggle to float on top, <laughs> otherwise we will sink. Now the meditation will help you not just keeping your head above the water, but keeping the whole body <laughs> on top <laughs> and healthy, happy, hmm? and not cold, not wet. So meditate, huh? Okay? Yes. yes. The monks also can meditate there, yeah? And when I leave, you leave, okay? I don't say it anymore, understand? <laughs> but actually, I don't need to speak in English, you all understand me. You want me to demonstrate? Zen doesn't need language, they say. You want it? You want me to demonstrate that you can understand me with a language? Yes. Okay, look here. If you understand, you say yes, all right? <laughs> you see, so what is the use of <laughs> learning any language at all? <laughs> all right, so now try to learn the inner language, okay? Meditate. Oh. <laughs> Turn off the lights. <laughs> what I tell you is always the truth, you see? I never tell lies. <laughs> Tôi đang yêu ngập ngừng giữa mộng Lòng phân vân khó tâm sự vì đây Nửa muốn yêu, nửa muốn tránh ngày sau Sợ tình ai như bẫy mong gió nào